Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Old Testament. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll be using for the text the Joseph Smith translation of the Old Testament, along with many commentaries from general authorities of the Church, BYU professors, Bible scholars, and others. This format will be very detailed, and so if you want a deep analysis of the Old Testament, you come to the right place. Thanks for your attendance. Hi there, welcome back. This is going to be for Esther chapter 2. After these things, when the wrath of, of the king was appeased, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what, she, and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, Let there be fair young virgins sought for the king. And let the, young, let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan, the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of Hege, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their things be pure, let their things for purification be given them. And let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti, and the thing pleased the king, and he did so. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shami, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. Little is known for sure of the background of Mordecai. He was from the tribe of Benjamin, and, and his great-grandfather was apparently carried into captivity in the first Jewish deportation into Babylon. Some Jewish writers believe that he held a high office in the Persian hierarchy that gave him access to the court. It is apparent from the biblical narrative that he was a devout Hebrew with great faith in Jehovah. He was also courageous, forthright, and practical. To his father's brother was born a daughter who was given the name Hadasha, or Hadassah, meaning myrtle in Hebrew. Throughout the sacred record, however, she is referred to by her Persian name, Esther, which means star. When her parents died, Mordecai adopted her and raised her in his home. Verse 6. Who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, from Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, meaning myrtle, I said, that is Hebrew, or that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and, and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house to the custody of Haggai, the keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her the things for purification, which such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens which were meet to be given her out of the king's house, and he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. Esther had not a, had not showed her people, nor her kindred, the Mor and for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. In other words, she didn't say that she was Jewish. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to, sh to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Now when, her, when every maid's turn was, get, was come to go into the king after she had been twelve months, according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purification accomplished, to wit, six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women. Then thus came every maiden unto the king, whatsoever she desired was given her, to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women, to the custody of Shashgaz, the king's chamberlain, which kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she were called by, were called by name. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Ab Abihail, the uncle of of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She, she required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther ob obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Adam Clark noted that the most beautiful of all the young virgins of all the provinces of Babylon were to be selected and were to be taken out of all the classes of the people indiscriminately. Consequently, there must have been many who were brought up in low life. An extended period of beautification and preparation of these women would be required to prepare them for presentation to the king. The statement that each virgin could take whatever she desired seems to imply that she could choose jewelry and other adornments to, in order to make the most favorable impression. Esther did not use this privilege, but took only what Haggai, the king's chamberlain or keeper of the, of the harem, gave her. She must have been of remarkable loveliness to be chosen by the king. It is also likely that the days of purification were used in training and education, 
in the ways of the king's court as well as in just physical purification. So I guess it took them almost a year for some of the girls to even look, look good. Sometimes makeup will help. I think it was President Kimball that once said even a barn looks good when it's an old barn looks good painted. I probably shouldn't have said that. Verse 16. So Esther was taken into king into the king's into King Azaraz into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month Tabeth, in the seventh year of the reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained favor and grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Ashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people, as Mordecai had charged her, for Esther did the commandment of Mordecai like as when she was brought up with him. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigthan and Teresh, and those which kept the door, were wroth and sought to lay hand on, on the king Azeroth. And the thing was was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. This incident is important because of, of the part it plays in the narrative later. And when, inqui and when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore they were brought hanged on a tree, and, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. So that's the end of chapter 2, and that incident is important for the history of what's going to happen here. And we'll see you next time. Bye.